Hello YouTube land, this is Brent Son coming to you from Lexington, Kentucky, the Bluegrass State. Today we have a guest who is going to share a Slender Man story. Very, very bizarre kind of story. Very kind of scary too. So I want you all to listen all the way through to the end because I think it gets good towards the second half and uprooting what this slender man thing is all about i appreciate that you all would uh um come hear these uh these bizarre kind of stories like this and i think that you're going to enjoy this and uh and learn something from it too if anyone out there has a story they want to share you can contact me at brentonson at gmail.com if you have a big man uh, or a big foot dog man uh any kind of cryptid supernatural paranormal or anything even like this story here um you can send your story to me give me some contact information a brief description of your story if you don't want to come on the show and share your story yourself then write out the story as you would want it to be known and heard and uh and i'll get back to you as soon as i can and we'll figure it out from there but anyway i hope you enjoy this this person's name is Sarah, and this is a very intense story that she has to share. I'll see you on the next video. Bye. All right. Today we have Sarah coming to share a very interesting Slender Man story. I've never had a Slender Man story in the past. I know that you all have looked through all of the uh, videos, and many of you have been with me from the very beginning. Um, never have had such a story as Slender Man. I didn't really even know what to think about it, but I got this email about two or three days ago, and I was super excited about talking with Sarah to uh, hear what in the world is this about. So we are going to get on into it and find out what this story is all about. And uh, her name is Sarah. And hello, Sarah. How you doing? Hi. If thank you, you for having me. You are very welcome, and thank you for coming and sharing your story. If you would, Sarah, I'd like for you to introduce yourself. You can tell as much information as you want um, about who you are and where you're from and things like that, because uh, I don't think it's you know that pertinent to your story. Um, so whatever you want to share is fine. Okay. Well, my name is Sarah. I live in Texas in the Dallas area. I have um, been um, listening to your uh, YouTube channel, and I have found it very informative. Um, it's really a, a very good uh, show that you, well, I, I feel like you're doing a very good service for people because um, I was not aware about dogman or I mean I had heard about um, Bigfoot but I had never really understood people and when you started putting on those um, interviews I could just hear how people would get so upset and when they would recount what they lived through and it, it would always take me back to my experience and I thought wow I wish I could talk to him about what I went through or what I've gone through that way I'm, I'm able to help others, just like you do when you um, put the shows on regarding other people and their experiences. So let me tell you a little bit about, a little bit of background. This um, Slender Man episode or happening happened about three months ago. It was very traumatic, extremely traumatic. Now, and before I get into that, I'll just give you a little bit of background. Um, when my husband passed away, um, we, it, it's just my daughter and I, we live on a farm. And uh, we really enjoy life on the farm. Um, but I started getting, when we first moved to the farm, I felt, I felt like, Something happened to me at night, and I, in the morning, I just didn't know what what it ha what had happened. I just knew that I would wake up depressed. So one day, I was just walking in the field, and I just looked up to God, and I said, Lord, you know, 
please reveal to me what is wrong with me, what, what's happening to me. And instantly it, it came back to what had happened that night. So this was the very first time that it has ever, ever happened. I'm sure a lot of people have experienced paralysis. Uh, right. They call it sleep paralysis. Right. But I don't think it's sleep paralysis. I believe that this is um, spiritual warfare. Because I all of a sudden I felt like something grabbed me by by my neck. Obviously, it's it was invisible because I woke up and I couldn't see anything. And it starts to it just it's really a traumatic. I I can't even um, explain to you the feeling, but you do feel like you start getting paralyzed. But there's this fear that grips you, and you can't move, and you can't talk. But in my mind, I kept saying, in the name of Jesus, I order you to leave. In the name of Jesus, I order you to leave. And once I said that about three times, it let go of me. But that was the very first time that that had, had ever happened to me. And I said, oh, it, it worked. Once I had doubted, I had doubted in my mind that it would work. And when I said it in my mind, oh, it worked, it grabbed me again. And then with all my might, I tried to speak, and I said, in the name of Jesus, I order you to go, and it went away. And then ever since then, um, I tried telling people what had happened to me, but people don't want to hear it. You know, people feel like you're crazy. My mom even told me that I was schizophrenic, and that put me in a very depressed state because I felt, felt very... I felt abused. I felt like it was something so traumatic that no one understood, and I wanted to, to, to be able to get it out. So time passed, and it would happen often. And I used to work for an attorney, and we would defend the bad guys all the time. And so we had... Uh, um, then I worked for the good side, and for assistant district attorney. And there were some cases. Uh, he had his whole office full from the bottom to the top. I mean, stacks and stacks of, of, of not files, actually, cases of um, rape, a child indecency, uh, child rape cases. And his he was a junior uh, district attorney, and so his office was, way in the back on this long corridor. It just really looked more like the uh, closet to, to me. But I remember that walking down that hallway, there was this really, uh, this case that really got to me, and I would come home with nightmares. Um, and I, I did a lot of crying over that one specific case. But I remember walking down this long hallway, and in that hallway, he would hang up all these posters. One specific poster that really got to me was where there's a, it's a, it's like a, it's a rendering, it's a drawing, and there's this little girl that is sitting behind her bed on the floor with her back holding her teddy bear, and you can just, I could just feel what she was feeling, you know, it's this things that are happening to you at night that you're not able to say it, and so I could just feel that pain, that's why I was able to relate so much to these little children that hide or if there's a lot of shame that goes with it. And so they hide their abuse. And they and it's not that they're protecting their abuser. It's just that there's so much shame that comes with it. Well, likewise, when you're dealing with abuse from a, from a physical abuse from a, a demon, basically, that's what it is then there's shame to, with that. People don't want to hear it. People think that you're crazy. People think that you're weird, you know? It's, it's really hard. It's hard to get it out. But anyway, as the years passed, and there were times that it was very quiet, and then there were times that it would happen again. But it put me in a position where, you know, you just smile, but you have this other life, this other abuse that you go through. And it, it, it made me very depressed. 
it it um it I started to believe that I was I was crazy. And so time goes on, my husband passes away and one night I couldn't go to sleep, but I kept looking at out every window. I just knew that there was something outside. I couldn't if you if you asked me what what do you think? What do you see? Is there anything you see out there? There was nothing out there, but I I had this gut feeling that there was something outside, and I went from window to window, just looking and looking. It was two in the morning, then three in the morning, and I just finally said my prayers and I said, Lord, you know, I think I'm going to go to sleep now, but I just feel like there's something out there. I don't know what it is. I just have this gut feeling. And no sooner, I was so tired, and right before I put my head down on that pillow, this thing grabbed me. It grabbed me, and it shook me, and it covered my mouth so that I wouldn't speak the name of Jesus. For the first time ever that day, I learned that I was not crazy, because it it happened to me before I closed my eyes. This was the very first time that it that it presented itself before I, I fell asleep. It was always in my dream. It was always in my sleep. So, and, and you know, I don't know if this is something we do automatically when you have those traumatic experiences. You 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 forget it. Uh, in order to to protect yourself, or do they do something to you so that you don't remember what they did to you the night before? So anyway, this time I had not fallen asleep, and it grabbed me, and I got so angry at it, and I was just about to curse this thing because it wouldn't let me go. I was about. This was the first time that I had. I didn't feel fear. I felt anger, and so it was as if I was staring into it, although I couldn't see it, but I was about to open my mouth. I, I think it could feel that anger, and it started to release me, and I started to say a bad word, and I knew, I think it knew, because it was releasing me enough so that I could curse it, but then I caught myself in my mind, and I said, no, I'm not going to be like him. So I said, in the name of Jesus, I already could go. And it covered my mouth again, and it wouldn't let go. It's just so traumatic. And, it, and it's not just something that, that grabs you. It's like your whole body hurts. It's like you're in a vice grip. And I kept saying it and mouthing it and, and, and talking as much as I could through, like, you know, in your mouth, it, your, somebody puts a hand on your mouth, and you must muffle everything that they're saying. Yeah. And finally, I, I did as much as I could, and I screamed and everything with, with it covering my mouth, and it finally let go. And I, it went away, and I just got down on my knees, and I cried. And I said, Lord, I laughed, and I cried. And I said, Lord, I'm not crazy. This, this is actually happening to me. This time it happened. I was so happy, yet I cried because... Uh, you know, you just, it's like an assault, you know, it's, right. it's something you can't see and assault you. It, 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 it injures you and your, your mind. I mean, we have, a, we have a lot of trespassers on the farm sometimes. And every time we come home, if we see somebody on, in our backyard, we go like, what are you doing here? I feel so violated. And that's how I feel with this thing, whenever it show, it would show up, I would just feel so violated. So anyway, from that day on, I I got on a quest to find out what exactly was happening. It never had occurred to me to look on the internet. I never knew what sleep paralysis was. It never occurred to me. It was this was something I kept to myself because there was so much shame in it that that something would come in the middle of the night and beat the heck out of me. You know? Right. Yeah. And and I never told my husband either, you know? And it right. was really, really, really a sad thing. I remember I had so much anger. And I always felt like maybe God didn't love me enough, you know, to let this happen to me. But anyway, as time went on, 
after this incident, um, I started getting more. I, was, I started to see, see things. One evening, I was sleeping, and this is about six months ago. And I always sleep with the TV on, even though it's on a blank screen. I just like that blue light that comes on, you know. It's not a bright light to turn the light on in the room, but there's it's like a blue hue of a light. Not completely, you know, kind of like a TV light. But anyway, one evening I was laying down and I had decided to sleep at the other end of, this, of the, my bed. And so the TV was on the other side. And so when I fell asleep, all of a sudden, I felt like something got on top of me. It wasn't very big, but I could see it. I, I could. It started hitting me, and all I said was, "Lord, He's hitting me," and I started to cry. And uh, you have to understand that in the process of of um, in the process of about, I was always a victim. And then I continued being a victim when I, when that day when I said, oh, Lord, he's hitting me. And it was this, I can only describe it to you because I could see him the, and the back of it, behind it was the TV, the, the, I could, you could see him through the TV light. And it was a ball. I described a, you know those uh, balls that look like um like a rubber band. It's a rubber band ball, but it's coming undone. And it's got all these tentacles going everywhere. Well, that's what was on top of me. And it all these little tentacles were whipping me. And I just cried and I said, Lord, he's hitting me. And no sooner that I said that, it went away. Right. Um... Next thing, more time passes, and I said, uh, I had a dream. I dreamed that something came through my room. Obviously, I couldn't see it. And came through my room. I stood up. I backed away, and I, and I tripped and fell against the wall, and I didn't have a chance to turn the light on. But I was... And that was the end of my dream. Right. So the very next day, that happened exactly. The door opened. Something came in. I stood up. And I was I was cracking up. I was laughing. Ha 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 so, same thing happened. I stood up, I backed up, I fell back, but I was in such a panic and laughing at the same time that this was happening that I couldn't get up. <laughs> in my dream, I did get up, but in real life, I wasn't getting up. So, I started screaming at it, and I, I was doing my best. That evening, I had, I had um, unplugged the lamp because I had used the plug for something else. And I forgotten to plug it back in. So I was, I, I said to myself, okay, get, stop laughing, get up and turn that light on. And so I was doing my very best to keep an eye on it and find the plug as much as, as fast as I could to put it in there. And then finally, when it, when the light went off, because it kept getting closer and closer and it was like this dark, like this dark shadow coming closer and closer. So anyway, I learned that every night that I did not say after my prayer, I would say, please, Lord, please don't let the bad man come in the middle of the night, and please don't let the enemy come in the middle of the night. There's a Bible verse that says that the enemy comes in the middle of the night. And so when I read that Bible verse, I said, oh, I need to put that in my, in my prayer. I'd say, Lord, please don't let the enemy come in the middle of the night. In the meantime, I'm thinking, 
why do you let this happen to me? You know, I'm, I'm your child. I'm a Christian. I'm a born-again believer. Um, you changed me. You transformed me. Why do you allow this to happen? I'm not, I'm not understanding. In the meantime, more things happen. It's the same thing, you know, always having this thing come in in the middle of the night and grab me. I this, go through the same thing in the name of Jesus. I, I order you to leave and so forth. Right. And it would go. But each time, you know, it, each time there was abuse, there was there was a beating that came with it. So, you know, you start getting a little stronger every day. As time goes on, you start getting a little stronger. And then you, you know, just knowing that I was in crazy did so much healing for me. But I still wasn't able to tell anyone because no one will listen. Right. Long story short, Thunderman shows up. Well... One evening, again, I decided to sleep on the opposite side of my bed, and I felt like, for instance, when when my daughter is, like, sometimes she can't sleep, and she'll come and lay down next to me. If she's in the hallway, I just feel her presence. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, well... That's exactly how this was. I just felt a presence coming down the hallway and opened my door. And what I did, I said, not tonight. <laughs> I felt really strong. I wasn't a victim anymore. I was going to fight back this time. But see, all other times I, I didn't fight back. I always leaned on God. This time I said, I'm going to fight it. So I sat up and I said, not tonight. And I sat up and I walked around the bed, met him face to face, and I started beating him up. It was this, the, the uh, it, it was as hot, well, he was probably, probably I would say five, nine, five, eleven. He had a suit on. He had no face. It, ha it was like if you took a, um, a pillowcase and wrapped it around his face. That's what he had. And so I threw a, my, the first punch and the second punch. And then it grabbed me. And I kept hitting. And But when it grabbed me with his hand, it grabbed me from my neck. And he started lifting me up. And so I started, I was still be able to hit and, and punch. And I was able to kick with my, my feet. But then, you know what he was doing? He was choking me. And his arms, I couldn't, I couldn't reach him anymore because his arms were, reach, were getting longer. And I could no longer hit him. And I was losing strength. I was, I was passing out. And I was confused because I was thinking, why, right before I passed out, Right before I was passing out, I could just, I was just in my, my own thoughts. All this is going on, all this chaos, all this. I forgot to mention something. Every time any demon came into my room, any time that anything came in, the ambience in the room felt like there was a storm. And so, and every time I cried out to God and he would give me that peace and he would, and after the whole episode, everything would feel so peaceful. And so this night there was the, the storm that was going on, but the one thing I was, it was like I, I was floating in my room and I hadn't, I no longer had. I didn't feel like I was dying. I felt like all of me was leaving. Like m my body was just floating. And I had, I kept t talking to myself as I was trying not to pass out. Why is my big toe touching the bed? So I hadn't realized in, in the struggle that I was no longer standing on the ground. I was... 
up. I was up, and my <clears throat> my big toe on my right foot was the only thing touching the bed. And so I felt like I was floating in the air with my legs dangling down. And then I could I didn't have any more breath in me. And just before I was, it was still had me. And there was this huge storm. It was just amazing. And just before I st I passed out, I said, Father. And the next thing I know, I'm gone. I'm laying in bed. <clears throat> I, I wake up. I wake up. I'm laying in bed where I where I was when it first when it first came in. And I'm laying on my pillow, and I, I barely open my eyes, and I, I'm, I'm trying to come to, I'm trying to wake up, I'm trying to, to regain consciousness, and I open my eyes as best as I can, but I can't move. I'm just so weak, and I see this door, this white door is in my room, and this beautiful blue light is coming from the bottom of it. And from the top, and I could, I could see Slender Man standing right there, facing that door. And all I could say was, "Father, Father, Father." Was I could just barely utter the words. It was just a whisper, but I remember looking at that light, and I said, "Light, a beautiful light." And I was crying, and I. That's all I remember. And that was, it was it. I passed out. I was gone. And then in the morning, that was it. That's all I remember. I know that God came and rescued me because in the morning, my daughter came. And I did not realize this. I, I'll tell you what she did. She really grabbed me and moved me around and screamed at me. And I, I, when I opened my eyes, I couldn't move. But it really amazed me because I was so used to that that abuse at night, and then I'm thinking, oh, I'm doing it's happening again, but it's my daughter. <laughs> and then I'm thinking, okay, why are you doing this? I could barely speak, and there was tears coming out of my eyes. I was just crying and crying, and but but at this crying, I could not, I couldn't even talk. It, it was it. And then I just didn't have any strength. I couldn't even move. And then she said, Mom, wake up. I've been trying to wake you up for the last 30 minutes, and I could, can't wake you up. And so she was panicking. Mm -hmm. right. And then it, I realized, I said, what? But she was angry at me. She was angry because I wasn't responding. You know how people get upset at something. and They're not upset with you, but they're upset at the situation. Mm -hmm. And then I said to her, please don't do that. Not right now. I, I can't handle it. And I could barely talk. And I was just crying. I said, something horrible happened to me last night. It was the most horrible thing that has ever happened, ever. And she sat by my bed. And I said, she said, okay, well, I don't want to hear it. <laughs> like most people do. I said, okay. But if I talk about it, I said, I start gaining strength. And so I started telling her. And the more I told her, my voice started coming back. And I started telling her <clears throat> everything that had happened. And it was like something so deep inside me that just needed to come out. And I just cried and cried. It was like my, my soul was just, not that my soul was being washed away, but that, that, that thorn in my heart that was there that could never speak out and talk about this, I was able to speak and talk and talk about it. And so finally, I said to her, why were you treating me the way you did? She said, I have been trying to pick, wake you up for 30 minutes. And then I said, oh. And something came to mind that I have always wondered. One day I was at the grocery store and a man and his wife were walking by, and he falls on the ground. He he passed out. So he was diabetic, and we did everything we could to help him out. And then the ambulance came. But I told the Lord, Lord, what is it like to, to faint? 
What is it? What do people feel when they faint? How do they feel when they come back? You know, when they come back to their senses. And so I was living that at that moment. I learned what it was to faint and to come back. And I'll tell you, have you ever wondered what it feels like to faint? Have you ever fainted yourself? No. Um, not ever fainted. Um, but I can get the gist of it, you know. Uh, so I always thought I, I could, too. But but when, when that happened, I was thinking, am I dying? Because I felt like I was. Right. And... But when I came to, it was the hardest thing to come out of that state because I didn't come out of it on on my own. You know, finally waking up. Right. My daughter had been my daughter had been um, moving me around for about thirty minutes. So and then, so, uh, so you you were seeing uh, when you you were you talk about the slender man attacking you. Um, did mm -hmm. you ever, did you, you saw it looking like the typical Slender Man at one point? Yes. That's exactly I, it, I, because I, I, I said. Really, I, I, well, you know, hold on just a second. I, I think that the, they can appear and, you know, um, whatever was attacking you could probably appear in many different forms. Maybe they do, you know, some of them look like, uh, certain things, you know, that people report, but. I, the Slender Man thing, I, I think it appeared to you as that um, because, I, it, you know, that's kind of a more of a modern type uh, thing. But, but you, you've had some really bad uh, demonic attacks. So I, I, I think what we're going to do is we're going to dig into your situation here and we're going to get you some healing this this more permanent is that is that okay with you yes okay and and i, I want to take a break right here okay and i'm gonna let you okay. take it take a break for a second i'm gonna take a break and i'm going to uh call you back in about five ten minutes something like that you know i'm gonna take a break right here because i i want to dig in and i want to help you get to a point to where you don't feel like you have to fight for your freedom. You don't have to fight to be free. You are free. Something, we're going to find out, God willing, what, what it is that the enemy has tricked you on to make you feel like you have to fight to be free. Because the Lord has said, all you who are heavy laden and burdened in many different things, you know, uh, uh, are, are downtrodden, come to me and I will give you rest. It doesn't sound like to me you have rest. Now, it doesn't mean that you, you, every Christian person will have necessarily a perfect life because I don't. You know what I'm saying? But I do know that you are having some things that are a little bit beyond what should be allowed for a child of God. So we're going to dig in and we're going to find the root of this issue and we're going to do away with it because the Lord doesn't want you to have this problem. And, uh, and I can guarantee you that. That's why he sent you to me. Is that okay with you? Yes. Okay. So let's take a five minute break and I will call you directly back. Okay. Make sure you answer now. <laughs> You'll be okay. worrying me all night if you don't. <laughs> you know, so don't do that to me. And uh, God, God forbid. But uh, I'll, I will talk to you here in just five minutes. Okay. All right. All right. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. We're back. And I want to um, start to dig in here a little bit and see what's going on. Um, now, the first thing, Sarah, I would like to ask. Um, you, you are a Christian, correct? Yes. Yeah. 
Okay. Um, do you mind if I ask uh, what denomination, anything like that? Well, I'm not denomination. I'm not a Catholic. But that's what you're asking. No, no, I'm not asking that. I kind of want to know, like, where your belief system might rest. Um, um, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Right. That He came and died for us. That He came to redeem the world. That He came not to condemn the world, but to save it. Right. I believe that He is the one that does the conversion, according to Colossians, through the work of the Holy Spirit. He does the operation, Colossians 1, actually 2. He does the operation in the conversion of the old man to the new person. So, huh. I believe that there is no future without without Jesus. That no one comes to the Father except through Christ. Okay. And no one comes to Christ except through the Father. Right. So, um, so you got that. You got that. Okay. Um, has there been any time in your life where you felt like the Lord has let you down? Oh, um, no, it's not that he let me down. I, um, I, I just became a Christian about, uh, 16 years ago. I've never been a Christian before that. Right. I used to be an atheist. That's a long so, time, though. I mean, yeah. sixteen years is a yeah. long time to be a Christian. So, okay. um, so you you've been a Christian for a long time. Um, have you? Do you have um, in your now? Now we've never talked about none of this. Um, so just so the audience knows, I've never asked you any questions because I don't. I really don't know um, anything much you know, about any of this, so I'm, I'm just, I'm fishing, you know, as, as we go here, and I believe the Lord's going to help us as we go along. Um, do, do, do you have anything in your childhood that might have been um, particularly uh, traumatic to you? No, not at all. No? Okay. No. All right. Okay. So, since you've been an adult and you um, came to the Lord, did you have anything um, times where maybe you were, hmm, how, how would I say, uh, um, depending, basically you, you might have felt like you were depending on the Lord, but you, he didn't come through for you. No, uh, you you could say that about me before I became a Christian, uh, because um, you know people would say to me, um, you know, you're going to hell and this and that, and I didn't care, mm -hmm. you know. But th that's that's the natural man. The natural man has no fear of God. It's only whenever you you're converted that you realize you have fear. I mean, that's you, there is a hell and there is a God and. And there's, you should reverence that, that being that gives you life when he takes it away. But, you know, I, I've seen, I've been on the other side where people don't care whether they live or die. It's just in the moment. They don't think of, they don't really believe that there's a hell or they don't really understand quite the consequences. That was me until God rescued me from, from that type of thinking and so um, he's the one that transformed me and now I think oh, if I, oh hell I don't want to go there there's this fear you know what I'm saying so mm. you could say that about me uh, uh, before that you know oh God never comes through or you know just what the natural man what the Bible calls the natural man how we do not hold God harmless you know uh, that's part of the, 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 I have this beautiful Bible that has a long list of all the, the characteristics of the wicked. And one of those is when you blame God for everything. Now, I used to be one of those, but I'm, thank, I am so, 
so blessed by him and by his grace that he, he rescued me and he, he changed me and he, I know I'm no longer that person. Well, yeah, I, I mean, I can see that you are reaching out for that thought pattern and, and, um, and I know that you're looking to the Lord for, for help and freedom because you would like to have peace and hope and joy. Now, um, that's sometimes kind of elusive for a Christian in this world because we live in a world that is not real easy to have peace and joy and uh, and those kind of things in uh, because this is just a hard world to live in that's just a fact you know and so I get that so I, I think that um, we need to look at uh, you know you know that Jesus likens himself to a shepherd right yes okay now you know that a good shepherd, as Jesus likens himself to, a good shepherd, you know, uh, and a shepherd is someone who, you know, will watch over his sheep. And he, he, and the Lord has said, you know, a lot of different things about being a shepherd. I'm the good shepherd. And he has also said that uh, if one, sheep strays off he will leave the 99 and go to find to, the one yeah to get the one so that tells you a mm -hmm. lot about what the lord thinks about you individually doesn't it yeah right you know the lord loves you don't you yes all right okay now you know that the lord does not want you to be tormented don't you I do, but I wonder why, you know, that Romans 8, where it says that, that all things work together for the good of those who love the Lord. And so, and it's finish, hard for me to have a conversation that verse. with you. Hold on, finish that verse out. All things work together for the good of those who love the Lord. And? and are called according to his purpose that's correct right okay well i think that you are you love the lord and i believe that you're called according to his purpose i, I believe that so okay i think when it comes to faith issues we need to get to the root of what you're believing that the lord responsibilities are to you so, what you're saying, well, let me, let me back up a little bit. Okay. Uh, well, maybe I'm misunderstanding you, so I'll let you go ahead and finish your, your train of thought, and maybe you might reword that because something else is coming through to me. Okay. So, go ahead. All right. Well, um... One of the, you know, the word faith that we find in the Bible, a lot of times is inter interchangeable for the word belief, right? And yeah. you, can, you can find examples of that when, you know, like uh, Peter and them was in jail and, and uh, the, the jailer thought that the all the prisoners had escaped and, and, uh, and, and the jailer was like, oh, no, you know, I'm, <laughs> he, he thought he was going to get put to death, you know. And Peter yelled out, don't suffer yourself. Um, we're still here. Don't don't fear, you know, we're, we're here. And uh, the jailer runs up to him and said, said uh, he, 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 since he just thought he was going to die, he didn't know what was going to happen to him, you know, after he dies. So he, ironically, or not ironically, but... Uh, you know, as anyone would be like, oh man, I thought I was just about to die, and I don't know what was going to happen to me. He he said, what must I do to be saved? He wanted to know, because he, he, he was just glimpsing over that edge, you know, it's going to be time for me to cross over, 
And here he is listening to these people of faith who believe in this man called Jesus. And, and he was all kind of confused about it. And he said, what must I do to be saved? And Peter said, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. So, therefore, we have this word believe on who? Jesus. Okay. Well, we know that when we believe on Jesus, um, that is basically what our what faith is, is believing on, you know, Jesus. You seem to have that concept, um, but does your faith extend to the point to where he is your good shepherd? So let me get this straight. So you're telling me that the reason I'm going through this is because my faith is not big enough. No, 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 no. I mean, because that's what's coming through. Right. It's not what I'm saying. Um, let's, okay. Let's back up. What do you believe Jesus' responsibility is to you? Well... Because belief is faith, this, right? What is Jesus' responsibility to me? Yes. Is that right. what you ask? Yes. He's your shepherd, right? Well, he's he's going to be doing one thing that I think is really awesome. And that, that I look forward to. And there's so many things that he has promised us. Mm -hmm. But one of them would be to present us righteously before God and he says with exceeding joy he will receive us with exceeding joy and he will present us before God Amen. so that was that's the day that when when we get to heaven whether it's on the day of judgment I think that's what he's talking about or maybe it could be the day that we die uh, oh. because to be absent in 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 the spirit is to be present with God. So, you know, a lot of people believe that when you die, you go and you sleep until the day of resurrection. But I yeah, believe so that. Yeah, so stupid. That's that's stupid. Yeah, that. Yeah. I mean, to me, that's so, ignorant. You know, that, that that's just ignorance of what what uh, you're not you're not having soul sleep. You, you know, absent from the body, you're present with the Lord, just like you said. Yeah. And and so, just put it this way, the Lord. There are some Go ahead. To answer your question, there are so many things that, that Jesus has promised me, you know? And th there's, I, I don't know that he's responsible for me. It, my life is not my own anymore. It belongs to him. Amen. Do you understand? Yes, ma'am. So what what responsibilities does he have to me? If I, he doesn't owe me anything, I owe everything to him. Your life is his. That's right. He has responsibilities I owe everything to, to him. I could never repay. He has so I, don't, I don't understand quite the question. He is your oh, shepherd. What, I think what you're, yes, what you're trying to say is, what responsibility What you're trying to ask me is, do you have? really believe in God? I mean, because if, no, if you're going no, no, through no, no, all this no. stuff, you wouldn't be going through this if if you really believed in God. No, I didn't is say that. Is that what I'm hearing from you? I know you? you believe in God. I know you believe in God. You And I believe you're saved. Okay. All right. Well, then the other thing is, is do you think you're worthy of God's love? Are you, do you think, think you're worthy, you're of, worthy God's... of God's love? No, nobody is. Yes, they we are. are. We have been saved through grace, through his sacrifice. Amen. Not that we're worth it. Right. You know, he, he deemed us righteous. He deemed us worthy. All right, we're getting somewhere. Not now. because we were worthy, because he, we, there's not one that is looks for right. God. Not one right. seeks God out. We're, we're, we're all sinners. Yeah, we're all all our righteousness is as filthy rags. Correct. Okay, but Jesus has said that He is your shepherd, right? Correct. Now, if a shepherd is a good shepherd, does he allow? For wolves to be in the sheepfold. 
I'm just trying to get to, to, to point out some areas that you can have faith in. Because I know you have faith in the Lord will save you, and I believe you will. Well, that's who came up. I mean, that, that door that was there. Right. I believe that beautiful light that was shining through was him coming. Amen. I but I just, was. I happened to pass out before I could see it happen. Mm -hmm. But that was just so comforting. I just knew he was coming. Right. I just knew he was coming. I, it was just so comforting, even though I had no more in me to give. Right. Yeah. Now, now I, just, I wanted to give you a little bit of a, uh, a break here to, so you're not feeling that things are down on you here, what, what we're talking about. But Apostle Paul said that he had a, uh, a, a, um, a, tor a, a tormenting spirit sent to him from, you know, basically uh, a, a demonic spirit was sent to him to buffet him. And it was, he said it was sent from, the, you know, from... Uh, the enemy and some people but, tried to argue that this spirit was uh, some kind of uh, thorn in the flesh that was uh, blah 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 you know it was a back problem or this or that but you know Paul said that it was a a um, he said it was a spirit that was sent to him and, and it was a tormenting type thing that was sent from hell basically you know what i'm saying so when you when you look at that he he struggled with it he struggled with it for a little while and he prayed that it depart from him and then finally the lord answered him and said that uh he said that that my grace is sufficient and that was when i think that he was able to get free from it because god god was saying look i've, I've given you the provision here I, I just I'm I'm trying to point out to you that Jesus told you he in his word that he is a good shepherd. Some people um, believe that Jesus is the Lord. Some people believe that Jesus saved their soul. Some people believe this and that and that. But I'm telling you that Jesus has also told you he is your shepherd who watches over a shepherd watches over the flock. The shepherd does not let things come into the sheepfold. And believe me, I've had my own attacks. And I pray, and there's been a lot of times, I still sleep with a light on, okay? I, I Because I, I sometimes get a little bit scared at night, and I have to pray. Because I've had such horrible attacks, physical attacks. Beings coming you right can. out of the wall, grabbing hold of me physically, picking me up. Um, right in front of witnesses, you know, kind of stuff. So I, I was, I was very, very fearful, and it's hard to get past that. So I have to. I grabbed on to this prospect of Jesus being a shepherd. I am okay. the good shepherd, he says. You know what I'm saying? So when you go to bed you should grab on to this concept of Jesus being your shepherd. He watches over the sheep while they sleep. The sheep don't watch over their self, do they? No, they don't. Right. The sheep don't have to worry. He didn't say the sheep need to worry about the shepherd watching, you know. No. You right. The sheep don't need to worry. He don't want you to worry. So what I'm saying is that Extend your faith into a couple of little different areas that I think you might have been missing and trusting in the Lord. Because we're supposed to trust in the Lord in all things, correct? True. Right. And he knows that you trust in him for your salvation. He knows that you trust in him in a lot of different areas. And it sounds like you are... are a, I know that the Lord it would say that he loves you very much. You know, one thing that I, I was talking to this lady from church, an older lady. She's, uh, she's an older lady, and I felt like, you know, she could be somebody I could trust and talk to her about it. 
no sooner did I start telling her that, she said, oh, you have that happen to you? Ugh, you must not be a Christian. And then I looked, I looked at her kind of like, wow, I didn't expect that from you. And then she said, well, I used to have that when I first became a Christian. But now that I'm an older uh, Christian, uh, that shouldn't be happening to you. You know, I came home offended. I came home crying, thinking, oh, so she, her faith is better. She's much better than I am. You know? Right. And, and, and thinking, yeah, that, that's, that, that's, I get that so much, okay? Because that brings condemnation on you for who you right. are. For your acceptance and things like that. Believe me, the Lord doesn't accept me any more than he accepts you. So there's a lot of times people reach out to me and they think somehow that I am somewhere different than they are, you know, and I can help them in some kind of way because of my position. Bull. It's not. It's nothing. To, the Lord loves you as, as much as he loves me. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? So it's not anything to do with that. It's the Lord sends you to me because I'm going to try and dig up something out of the Word of God to tell you that might help you believe in a way that you feel that you're on this, you know. Um, well, I, like I was telling you, up. the day that I decided to fight on my own strength, it's a day that I had never passed out like that before. I had never been floating in the air with my legs dangling. Do you know what I'm saying? Right. It, that day, I said, not tonight. And I stood up and I went around the bed and just met up with him face to face and started hitting him. And all the other times I've learned, I've always cried out to God. And once I was able to to do that, and he, when they cover your mouth and you can't say it out loud, because it has power. You know, when you tell a demon, I subject you in the name of Jesus, I, I find your feet in the name of the Lord. I bind your hands in the name of Jesus. I bind your your mouth in the name of Jesus. And then I I, I tell them, I preach to them. And right. they go. Right. Uh, but this night, I decided to just get up and start hitting him. And boy, did I learn my lesson. Uh, I thought Slender Man was just a cartoon that kids drew. And it was a fad, like you said. You know, and, that, and I agree with you. It's just something, it can take form and shape of anything. Right. And that night, it took form of Slender Man. So, but I understand what you're trying to do. But okay, it, let's, let's do I'm this. Sorry to, uh -huh. Let's do this. Okay. Um, we're go going to say that when you go to bed at night, you're, you're going to pray over your house. Pray, pray over yourself first, go to bed, and you say, uh, Lord, I ask you in the name of Jesus, that, um, I, well, you would say this, Father, I ask you in the name of Jesus that you forgive me of my sins, and I ask that you help me uh, to become a better Christian, stuff like that, okay? And then I want you to say something like, to the effect of, Lord, I ask you to protect my home, I ask mm -hmm. you to protect my children, I plead the blood of Jesus over my home. I plead the blood of Jesus over my children. And I ask that you establish a hedge around my home, around my family, and what have you, that we can sleep and have peace uh, uh, while we sleep because you promised that we uh, God's children would have um, sweet sleep. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to trust you, Lord. And then I want you to, at that point, I want you to, use one, this one verse that comes in where the Lord asked this person if he believed and he said, this guy said to the Lord, he said, I believe but help my unbelief. So I want okay. you to ask the Lord to say, Lord I have faith in you but help my unbelief. Strengthen okay. the areas in which I am struggling to believe and trust that you're my good shepherd. Because I know that a shepherd watches over the flock and the sheep don't have to worry about Okay. It. Okay? Okay. If I'll you do that. that, I promise you, 
I guarantee you that the Lord will meet you in that. He will strengthen your faith. He's going to help your unbelief. And he's going to protect your home where you as a sheep can sleep in the sheepfold, not having to worry about the job of the shepherd. The shepherd's job is the shepherd's job. It's not the sheep's job. And I just, I just, I think that the Lord might have sent you to me just to uh, have you know that you, he wants you to work on trusting him to be the shepherd. And you just worry about being a sheep. A sheep only worries about going around in the fold and eating and doing his thing, you know. <laughs> you know, what I'm saying the sheep don't have to worry about all the stuff, dumb stuff. Uh, you know, wolves coming in the sheep fold and all that kind of thing. Um, yeah. But but if you if you ask him to help you with your unbelief, I promise you he will. Okay. Will you do right. that? I will do that. I think that if uh, that lady from church would have come across that way and said to me, maybe you need to grow in your in your trust in him more. Maybe right. maybe there's an area in your life, is what I'm hearing, that you just need to trust God more. Amen. And, and just rest in him. Amen. You know, just rest in him. Like right. the shepherds, uh, like in Psalms 23, he makes he make me lie down in great pastures, just Amen. rest in him. Yeah. So I understand what you're saying. And, and you were coming across there for a minute, like... My little sister at church, and I'm like, oh, okay. no, 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 no. Goodness and mercy will pursue you all the days of your life, okay? Mm -hmm. You need to believe that. Goodness and mercy will pursue you all the days of your life. And goodness and mercy are awesome things, uh, you know. And God will pursue you with those things. I promise you that. Because you know why we know that? It's because His Word says that. And his word is esteemed even above his name in heaven. You can never, ever put any more weight than, than need, you know, to me, the word is the most important thing for a Christian on this world. Because his word has all of the things that we, we have to put our faith in his word. And, uh, yeah. and, and, and if we don't know his word, then our faith can be lacking in areas because we don't know where we are. We should be able to trust the Lord in all the things that he says in his word. And, and you know, when you find yourself in, in a very, and it's been a while since I've been depressed because, like I said, when I first started realizing that, it was, that, that I was not crazy, there started to, to be a lot of healing. But there's one thing um, that... When you're so depressed, you know, you just don't see anything, hear anything. You know, you're in your own zone. But there's just something inside you, that little voice, that Holy Spirit, that reminds you of that one Bible verse. And you say, you know, I'm at my end's wit. I mean, I don't know if I can make it to tomorrow, but I've got this one Bible verse that I can hang on to. You don't remember, you might not remember anything else, but you've got that one Bible verse that you've got to, that's your lifeline. And I have been there several times where I say, I'll pray and pray and pray and say, Lord, I've got to believe this one Bible verse. If this is all I can believe today and all I have strength for, I've got this one Bible verse. And it works. It really works. Like you said, that's our lifeline. Even if you have one Bible verse, one promise that he has of so many that he's given us, you got to hang in there and hang on to that one Bible verse. Amen. But um, I've well, grown. I've grown a lot. You have. And you've grown just since we've been talking. And uh, I think, Sarah, what we'll do is to wrap this up. Um, and I, I, I want to say thank you for coming and sharing. And you've got my email. Um, and we'll talk some more, okay? And because I want to okay. check up on you and see how you're doing. Um, but I, what I want to end this as is saying thank you to all the listeners that are listening to this and uh, that have pressed through to the end of the uh, the show tonight. 
um, I just want to say this, um, that, that it, well, first off, anyone has any uh, kind of story that they want to share, you can contact me at brentson at gmail.com, um, and I'll put the, uh, the email in the description. But I want to end it with a prayer for all of those who are depressed. All of those who is de are depressed for Sarah here. And God knows your full name, Sarah. So I want this prayer to be for all of those who are listening who might be depressed. Okay. And, uh, and I'll just say that, that, that this, this would be for all people who listening to this who are depressed. And we'll end it with that. So is that okay with you, Sarah? Yes, I okay. I would have, in my mind, I was thinking I wanted to open it up with a prayer because I, nothing, everything without Jesus in the middle of it doesn't work. If you take right. Jesus out of the equation, nothing works. Right. All right. So we'll, we'll end it with that. And then I will be talking to you. Uh, we'll, we'll be emailing each other some, okay? Because I want to be checking up okay. on you over the next few days. But anyway, right. we'll, we'll, we'll end it with that. And, uh, and God bless you, Sarah. And, and, uh, Thank you. And all those who are listening. So uh, everyone who wants to partake in this prayer that might be feeling depressed, that might be feeling downtrodden, who might be feeling heavy burdened. I want to ask the Lord lift these burdens from you. And ask, ask that the Lord give you peace in your mind. So we say Heavenly Father I come to you in the name of Jesus. I ask Lord that you touch every person who's listening to this tonight Lord. And you know that it's not about any one person. When it comes to someone like me who is trying to say a prayer that might be beneficial to anyone but it's about you Lord I ask that you help everyone's unbelief that they might trust in you to be able to give them some peace to be able to look to your word Lord because you have so many promises in your word that you're a good shepherd and you can give peace of mind. You can give a sound mind, Lord. And I ask that in the name of Jesus that you touch everyone's mind. And you lead them to the truth in Jesus' holy name. Amen. Amen. All right. God bless you, Sarah. You're, you're welcome, sweetheart. And and uh, I, I really want to say thanks for coming on. And I'll be talking to you over the next few days here with email and see how you're doing. And I... And I, okay. I I trust that you're going to be doing better. Um, I know you will. You know, all things work together for the good of those who love God and called according to his purpose. And I know that that's the case for you. And your shepherd is watching over you. All righty. I'm going to work on that trust thing. Amen. All right. All right. All right. Well, we'll okay. talk to you later then, Sarah. Right. And everybody bye -bye. out there in YouTube land, God bless. And we'll see you on the next video. Bye-bye.